the Radio Forest Podcast. It's good to speak to you. How do you prefer the pronunciation of your name? I see so many different versions of interviews. Best is Cavalieri. Yeah, Cavalieri that's... is the easiest one. That's the American version. But you got to go with the Italian, right? You got to stick with well, that. Well, uh, I'll tell the... you, down here, I live in Nashville. You know, they usually stop at Cav. Hey, ca- Cav. Yeah, stop. yeah. So that's I, okay. I guess in New York, they could get it. In Tennessee, that's that's not happening. It doesn't, doesn't work. So tell me about this new solo release, man. It's been a long time, the 90s, since you've done a solo album, right? Yeah, yeah, basically, you know, I, I've done a, a couple of live products, you know, that we, we we take on the road, but I haven't done a studio album in a while. So, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, you know, uh, basically I said, well, it's, it's either let's do some music or we could all, all lose our minds. So we decided to, you know, make some music. So was the writing process pretty easy then? Did you have decades of backed up ideas and riffs and things in the studio or was it like a brand new project and you started from It was a brand new one? project, you know, and, and the idea behind it was to take five old songs that influenced me, show re-record them, of course, and to show that influence. And I had some help here. I, I, I was able to, uh, you know, write with uh, some people that, uh, like a professional songwriter, Steve Warner, uh, who's a, actually a country artist. He contributed uh, a few of the songs to, uh, to with me, which was, was a total joy. I mean... Uh, we had to do it mostly online, which was a little different. I had two young fellows from Toronto come down. We wrote the song Soul Love. Uh, basically, making music uh, it kept me alive. Is that because of the pandemic, you mean? Because then you're off the road, you're not doing live performances, there's no touring? Exactly. We were off everything. I mean, uh, you know, everybody was was home, you know, and... Uh, we had started at the tracks in a live studio, uh, but that was it. And so we were locked up. And fortunately, because of the technology today, we, we could finish it. Now, I don't mean this in any sort of disrespect. Have you done any other job? Like you don't have, it's not like you also can do like carpentry or you studied medicine for a while, right? But uh, yeah. w- what else do you have going on? I mean, you're just a musician, right? That's what I've been doing my whole life, you know, writing and composing and uh, performing, you know, i um, I don't know if I could do anything else. <laughs> yeah. Now, a lot of this is covered in your autobiography and the cover, Linda McCartney took that photo? Correct. How does it yeah. end up on your book? I mean, obviously it's a picture of you, so you're aware of it, but is it just like a normal process? Well, you know, in the in the, in the in the 60s, Linda was a photographer uh, and she basically uh, did most of her work around musicians. You know, as a matter of fact, she has, uh, rest her soul, uh, some really good coffee table books if somebody wants to take a look. Uh, fantastic photographer. And uh, I remember that shot because it's in one of those books. And I, I asked if we could use it. And uh, the the family gave me the uh, permission, which I really appreciate. Now, with the Rascals, I know you guys did some touring in Europe with the Beatles. Uh, I know you're in Ringo Starr's uh, all-star band there for a while, but I- I'm more curious because not a lot of people talk about it, and I don't know a lot of people I can interview that have insight to this. Uh, Harrison, one-on-one, I know you spent some time out of the limelight. Was he still a, a quietish guy, or do you think that was just because of the fame and-, and being hounded and always being recognized? No, I think you know uh, what you see and saw from George was what he was. You know, he was a really, really nice, gentle man. You know, I mean, he was a a good, 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 good soul, you know, and uh, very talented. I mean, you know, you look at that group, there were three songwriters in that group. Three, three good songwriters in that group. You know, mm-hmm. John, of course, Paul, of course, but George got some great material out there. Did you get to see that documentary? I did get back did that bring back some memories because you're you probably had real fond memories about that era of music and rock and roll and and all of what you're doing too yeah those days were different you know i mean basically uh, uh it brought back a lot of memories a lot of it is just exactly like you know we were doing in those days uh, yeah you know with, with the with the type of recording the tape the analog the studios the camaraderie the breakup yeah <laughs> a yeah. lot of a lot of it was came back a hit hit a few uh, nerves. Now, I think you covered it in your book, though, but could you tell me the story about Otis Redding hearing you guys and then sort of being surprised about who he sees? Well, basically, uh, you know, we were the first uh, white act on Atlantic Records. 
Uh, they red and black label always, you know, it was an R and B. And, uh, you know, we didn't really have the benefit of Zoom or MTV yet. So a lot of people didn't know unless they saw Ed Sullivan or Hullabaloo uh, that we were white. Mm -hmm. So what happened is Mr. Redding came into the studio one time. See, Atlantic Records was very open. I mean, they were not like, you know, can't go in, they're recording. You know, they were, you just walked in, it was like a family. And he was a real character. You know, and he opened the door and he said, my God, they are white. Uh <laughs> and then he just walked out just walked out <laughs> uh talk to me a little bit about your relationship with stevie van zandt i know he inducted you guys into the rock and roll hall of fame and also worked on your um your broadway production well uh you know basically uh he was really helpful uh with uh, getting us into the hall of fame uh he was on the board there uh his induction speech getting us into the hall of fame is what landed him on The Sopranos. Uh, basically, uh, the producer of The Sopranos uh, saw that uh, introduction and said, I want you to try out, you know, for the show. So we have a relationship with him. And then later he took us on to Broadway with a, a Once Upon a Dream, which was a, you know, a show we did there based on one of our albums. So, yeah, it, you know, it was really helpful and we appreciate it. How did you know he was a good fit for that? I mean, is it? Broadway's a little bit different than the standard rock and roll band, even with the B3 organ, it's still kind of different, you know, and Stevie is iconic for his guitar work. Is it just through getting to know him and you're like, I think this would work or was it the other way? He sort of came to you and said, Hey, I got, I got some ideas here. Well, he came to us with that particular idea. Yeah. That was his, uh, his idea. You know, the uh, Jersey boy kind of inspired a lot of people to do Broadway. Yeah. Uh, the four seasons. Uh, and of course, the Who had a wonderful uh, 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 Broadway show. I think they called it Tommy. But what, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's something that he wanted to try, and I'm glad we did. Now, talk about being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now, and about the voting process. Is it overwhelming? Is it pretty simple? And uh, how many of your picks seem to go along with like what you're hoping for? I guess is my question. Well, you know, if people who don't know how it works, there's a nominating committee. And that's where the kind of rub is, because unless you're nominated, of course, you can't get voted for. So when they come up with the so-called nominees, we, the uh, people who are inductees, we get to vote. How many do I get out of the uh, norm? Well, I don't know. I have a tendency to go with the older guys, the older talent, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the new ones, you know, Maybe I don't choose them, but that's okay. There's plenty of people that get them in. Now, let, let me ask you a silly question. Are you voting online? Do they send out a paper and you got to sit down with a, a pencil and, and think about it and fill it out? Or how does the voting for the nominees for the Rock Roll Hall of Fame it, it, work? It comes out in the in? mail. It comes in the mail. It's a, it's a brochure. It's a pamphlet with, uh, you know, people's names on it and the ballots. And it's very, you know, like you, you got to seal that thing up. You got to sign it. You got to put a signature on it. You know, it, it's something you can't really like, fool around with because I mean, it's it's a big honor to be in there. So it comes in the mail and it's filled out. And jumping back a little bit, I had one more question about the Beatles. How did you end up in, in Ringo's all-star band? I mean, he just has the cream of the crop of the musicians. <laughs> Is it because you'd known him for so long or does he kind of like cycle through and, and how does your name end up to get into the band with Ringo? Well, there's a process. And I think the process has to do at that time with the person who was producing it. The person who was producing it probably recommended me to to Ringo and his family is uh, and 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 Ringo said, yeah, let's do it. That's awesome. All right. So you've got the book out. You've got this solo album. How many tracks on this new release then and now? Well, there's five old ones that were influenced uh, that influenced me. And I re-recorded Ray Charles song and Clarence Carter's song and Jackie Wilson's song and Benny King's song. And then there's five new ones that I wrote with people that live in Nashville, you know, and uh, they show that influence. So there's 10 to be complete. And getting back on the road, setting up a tour, how's this going to go as far as promoting the album out in the public? Well, uh, you know, when we do a tour, for the most part, people want to hear the oldies but goodies. Yeah. So we, we got to kind of slip in some of those new guys. Yeah, but, I get, uh, yeah, with your career, I guess you're kind of limited. You're like, guys, I only have like an hour and a half, two hours, and I have to play all the hits. And, and I understand that the people want to hear those. So we basically, 
you know, we use podcasts like yourself and radio stations to kind of tell us, tell the people, this is available, FelixCavalryMusic.com. But if you want to hear them good oldies but goodies, come on out. Yeah. Felix Calaveri, and from the Rascals, you've got the solo release then and now out now. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Songwriter Hall of Famer, and a ton of other accolades. Felix, an honor, man. Thanks for talking to me today. Hey, Forrest, thank you for taking the time.